you know what nihal you guys have something positive to take away from that game if mount scored like people even forgot that he's he playing exists. tonight so he that's exists. good yeah. i i mean there i think the walking away with the point is the biggest positive from that game this leads us to top 5 race and mm-hmm. obviously i say top 5 because fifth player position <laughs> is mostly going to get champions league and i think it's probably logged now between aston villa and spurs what do you think snt you still can get it i mean it's still a, as long as it's mathematically possible we as idiotic fans will hope that it's going to happen it works out and i honestly believe what prayag said on the group chat we consumed all of our luck that night for us to be here with one point more than what we started in the weekend i genuinely mean it like there it had to be divine intervention for them to hit three four times posts and like all those chances missed onana faced 31 shots and like did not still did only conceded one goal and that one goal was as a result of like obvious glaring defensive mistake from our left back but yeah as long as i'm digressing but as long as we have a chance i no, think but <clears throat> it's like for united right the probability of conceding a goal increases exponentially after you guys have scored a goal i think this was just like pure lapse of concentration this instance at least they could not believe that they scored like literally i don't think any of those 11 players could have walked back home and be like we played better i don't think anyone could have uh, could have said that mm. so i think Denmark, bro but <laughs> Ten Hag said like that. <laughs> no, Ten Hag also said that like Brentford were better. What are you saying? So <laughs> he always brings up random shit, dude. Like I feel so sorry for him because if he, he's like, oh, City came here and they struggled. Liverpool came here and they struggled. Blah 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 blah. He just yeah. does not have any answers anymore. Like his com- his favorite comeback is I could have won at Arsenal. Yeah. <laughs> That day, you guys. Like, oh, that was an offside. He was like, that wasn't offside, and that was a penalty in Holland. I'm like, dude, move on, bro. No, actually, <laughs> these days, whenever he gives a press conference, right, he's not talking to you guys. He's not talking to like he's a, he's only putting on a show for Radcliffe. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, so that's a good point. Yep. He's yeah. shit scared to lose his job. I think he's to to be honest, I don't think he's as bad a manager as he is being, you know, as it is playing out in reality. But I feel like he's just shit scared of losing his job at this point and he's I, doing I think what really him. works against him. Why like there is so much talk about Ten Hag is because, you know, like United got in his cronies. I mean, whatever, his people from AI <laughs> and didn't work out. That's why it's that's why like it's become so bad. Yeah. They got a lot of people that literally was under him for many years. So this yeah. is kind of weird. Don't you think? Don't you think he needs to be cut a little bit slack? Given two of their centre backs, starting centre backs got injured. No, and he should. Be. Like I've always said that United should not sack Ten Hag. That they should definitely keep him on for at least one more season. But this thing really works against him. And you know what, Nihal, you guys have something positive to take away from that game. If Mount scored. Like people even forgot that he's he playing exists. tonight. So he that's exists. good. Yeah. I, this felt like the worst performance ever. Like because we were not mm. pressing, we were letting them play. We made like Brentford look like Arsenal or City, bro. And that is not just <laughs> Brentford. Like every performance in the last ten games, every team felt that they were like a really top tier team against United because we let those teams play. And this yeah. has to come down to tactics, you know. I personally have a problem with Rashford. I just think we should we should move on from mm. the project called Rashford because it's not. I worth see it. it. Like, I see it. Not, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, like mm. it's not worth it to be honest because we can genuinely because he's paid a lot of money. It's probably time to like move him on if PSG come back with an offer. It makes perfect sense. I'm losing hope on Ten Hag day by day. What about no. Ange though? What about Ange? Is he is he gonna sustain his performances from this season to next? I mean, I I personally feel like one defender or one player gets injured and then the whole uh, you know whole of their fan base is about oh this player is missing that's why we're not able to play blah blah blah. Even this well, he's match- good though. You have to give it to him. He's good. Like he? uh, he's a modern manager. He's good. Like it's not that easy to pull off what he did. Like okay. his first yeah. couple of games. And it's 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 not, it's about managing the image. It's about managing the brand, the fans. So he's done a good job. Right? You know, don't you think like, he's like a perfect Liverpool manager? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> Liverpool. He could be I mean, right. I think he was a Liverpool fan, right? He was a Liverpool yeah, fan growing or something. Fan. Yeah. yeah. In the the moment he said referees should get more time after the Diaz goal, and I think that kind of stopped him from becoming a Liverpool manager for me anyway. But anyway, but he he's a he seems like a very good man. He has a good personality and everything. But as Boss Prayag was saying, I think he what the best thing he did was develop a style of play. You can see how Spurs are playing right now. There is an identity, and there is definitely. 
definitely i mean he's a bit rea- you know bit naive and then you know does those he played like the, against a chelsea match right i think he was playing with nine men he was still you know, going for it or something and all of that so apart from those you know brain fogs here and there i think he's 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 a good manager but in terms of liverpool um, i think if he was free definitely he, he would have been looked in and he, if he was kind of willing to come but with spurs i think he found a good good solution for his career at this point and i think he's stable i think he should continue the work he's been doing and maybe mm-hmm. a couple of years down the line if some things kind of align maybe but right now not he's really- done a very smart thing you know what he's done he's built like from the very beginning he's built up political capital with the fans and the media yeah. so yep. now even when he makes a mistake everybody like, oh, it's fine you know yeah he mm-hmm. he's he's new to the league so that's a smart thing to do ten hag should learn how to be likable from this guy no no <laughs> just so likable pairs with they're fun to watch like, yeah whenever they play it's actually a lot of fun to like watch that football game because of how like expansive they are i've never seen some any team like be that that's stupid like you can't win the league with that mentality but it's just commendable that like he comes to a league where it's already so hard and like you know loses Harry Kane and still like be is very ballsy the first few fixtures worked in his favor and all these things right he's a smart guy so it built that capital with the media and with everyone and moved on he's also adapted right a little bit like yesterday substitution were a little bit more pragmatic i saw a little bit more of like you know conservatism from his substitutes and his overall approach to the game which obviously we hadn't seen in the first half of the season where he was like oh ultra high line if somebody is missing i'll play player people out of position not being conservative if i'm leading so i think that also i mean as you said he's learning and adapting as as and when he's he's getting experienced in the league if una emery guides aston villa to top 5 4 champions league basically does he like will any big team take a punt on him next season given the number of vacancies that there are barcelona bayern and number of vacancies that there are does he deserve another chance after psg arsenal i think he's comfortable where he is man i think una emery uh, i think i don't know i think with arsenal he got found out because it was too big of a club for him and again his tactics sometimes you know didn't, didn't just kind of match uh, with PSG as well that Barcelona 6 again all of these embarrassments and all of that so I, I think he kind of again I think after PSG he went to Villarreal or Sevilla yeah Villarreal Villa League oh, there Nihal would remember yeah oh yeah Villarreal and then Nihal would remember yeah the Digia penalty right <laughs> so and, af- and after that I think he came to Aston Villa I'm thinking he's he found his level and Aston Villa are not one of those are not Brighton or West Ham or anything they they are investing a lot if you look at the number of players that they want to they spent on players and the investment in general they've been doing that a lot and i think they are they're this close to breaching ffp as well i mean again hopefully they won't do that but i'm just saying they're kind of investing a lot and i think it's a good place for emery to stay at least for a season and see if he can build on that and maybe he something will come out of it but even personally i think emery it suits him it, how would you take him hmm. at united uh, i don't know i don't think so like no? it's no i mean no more good evening for you no more good evening for me no thank you uh, i don't know um i don't think i know i very well know like what kind of manager that i want at united i think that is partly down to the reason why i'm like not so happy to jump on the ten hag out train because if i if i'm jumping on that train that means that i'm rooting for my season to go like bust let's let's hope and- With with Unai, the problem is at big clubs when the personalities get b- bigger than him. I don't know if he can. He's a good man manager in that aspect, and I think PSG and Arsenal were both places where that's the thing that didn't work out maybe for him. I think Unai Emery's Unai Emery and even Ten Hag's biggest downfall is their management of media. I think yeah. their lack of media presence and their lack of ability to convey their thoughts as well as buy time from media kind of plays against them. It's just yeah, Unai Emery had a disaster class in doing it at Arsenal. Yeah. and probably I mean, Ten Hag is the same the the problem is for Ten Hag results never like started off the way that he ever expected like Ange was lucky that like you know he started off with such wins so many wins in the beginning he was undefeated for like nine games right like the first nine games so mm-hmm. not wrong yeah, yeah. yeah. Spicy was a lot of like purchase in media like Eric Ten Hag started his career with like two big L's in the Premier yeah, League big time yeah it takes time to like you'll never recover sometimes you need your luck and like you know the first impressions do matter especially like when you're yeah. striking the bond with media and kudos to Arteta for actually overcoming all of that because there's a big media bias against Arteta and he Arsenal. was on the ledge yeah. right like so yeah. it came very and close to being weirdly sad weirdly enough weirdly enough Klopp didn't have the performances in the beginning but he still like got some purchase because he See, was like yeah. how is a different animal he's charismatic as fuck he's like a different people animal people like Klopp yeah right? 